What's up everyone and welcome back to the comms channel. I'm back from what has been my most successful storm chasing trip to date. During this year's chase I was able to observe three brief tornadoes, encountered numerous supercells, and drove through some intense dust storms. Now I'm back and while we're on the topic of shit hitting the fan situations, in this video we'll explore the features and capabilities of what in my opinion is the best shit hits the fan radio. Additionally, I'll also present a viable alternative that I believe is worth considering as well. So hang around and we'll dig into it. Two, three, four, five, go. Grab four miles west. Okay, I'll be back in six seconds. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. If you find yourself in a difficult situation where you need to be mobile and don't have access to your radio systems at home, you're going to want to have a way to both communicate and more importantly, listen and gather intel. While you may have various radio systems at home to cover the ability to communicate via ham radio, FRS, GMRS, MURS, or even CB radio, and other radios for gathering intelligence, and maybe even hardware to do packet radio. It's usually not feasible to carry multiple radios and other communication equipment with you as your bag likely doesn't have much room for much else when you pack in essentials like water filtration and transportation, food, medical supplies. And in a situation where every inch of space in your bag matters, a portable radio that serves multiple functions becomes a valuable asset. The radio I had initially had in mind for this was going to be my favorite handheld transceiver, the discontinued Kenwood THD-74. However, that changed when Kenwood recently unveiled its successor, the Kenwood THD-75, during the Dayton Hamfest recently. Now while this radio is yet to be released, the current available information on it suggests that it has all of the features that made me consider the THD-74 to be one of the best shit hits the fan radios. The THD-75 also introduces several new features that make it even better choice than its predecessor. Again, this radio has yet to be released, so assumptions are being made in the video based on the current THD-74 and what information has been released on the THD-75. Additionally, I also want to discuss a more budget-friendly alternative with reduced capabilities. That would be the Yaesu VX-6. While it may not match the Kenwood in terms of features, the VX-6 offers similar functionalities such as the 220 band and the ability to receive shortwave that make it a worthy alternative in my opinion. As you likely already know, the FCC does not allow you to secure your communications with encryption on ham radio. We'll be discussing encrypted comms options in some later videos, so stay tuned for that and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. For this video though, let's say you want to talk within the FCC limits while limiting the number of people listening to you. One effective approach is utilizing the 220 band, which is less popular compared to the other bands and thus attracts fewer potential listeners. This particular band is not widely available in many countries, resulting in fewer radio manufacturers producing devices that support it. Consequently, the limited availability of radios for this band decreases the number of individuals capable of tuning in. It's also worth noting that many scanners do not include the 220 band in the received range. Only the higher end models and communications receivers are equipped to pick up signals from this band. Both the Kenwood and Yezu radios cover the 220 amateur radio band, however, it's important to note that the Yezu radio has a limitation on this band. For some reason, they've restricted its power output to 1.5 watts, 1.5 watts, whereas the Kenwood puts out the full 5 watts the radio is capable of on 220. Another significant part where the Kenwood shines on the 220 band is its D-Star digital voice capability. 
as of the time of this video is being made, I'm not aware of any other transceivers on the market capable of doing D-Star on the 220 band. This virtually eliminates 99% of the radios out there from being able to listen into your communications if using D-Star on this band. The only other radios capable of receiving D-Star on 220 would be high-end communication receivers or software-defined radios. I believe the Kenwood is actually the only radio capable of doing digital voice of any kind on the 220 band. Another important capability to discuss is the ability to monitor the lower frequencies in the HF range, sometimes referred to as SWL or shortwave listening. It offers the advantage of monitoring signals beyond your local area as they can propagate over long distances, surpassing the line of sight limitations of the higher frequency bands. So what can you expect to monitor in this range? There's actually a wealth of information available that can prove invaluable in various situations. One key benefit is the ability to access news broadcasts which can provide updates on current events in the event that the internet communications are down and your local FM radio stations fell prey to whatever disastrous event has occurred. While not as prominent as before due to the rise of the internet, there are still plenty of news broadcasts that can be received within this range and both the Kenwood and Yezu radios have the capability to pick up these broadcasts. However, to optimize reception, I recommend upgrading from the stock antenna as they're terrible for these lower frequencies and consider alternatives. At a minimum, you'd want a telescopic antenna, but the best option would be one of these banana connectors and long pieces of wire on each end to create a dipole antenna. Speaker wire works great for this and you would just hook up whatever length is feasible to carry your bag and put one on each end to make the dipole then stretch it out and tie it to an object. One benefit of the Yezu VX6 when it comes to shortwave is that it comes pre-programmed with a number of shortwave broadcast frequencies for many countries that you can quickly tune to. The next thing that'll be beneficial to monitor in this frequency range are going to be the amateur radio bands, which can offer valuable information as well. The Kenwood also leaves the Yezu behind here. The reason for this lies in the modes of communications commonly used within the amateur radio HF bands. Most of the amateur radio communications on these frequencies occur in sideband mode, which the Kenwood radio supports, but the Yezu, however, is limited to AM only, and cannot tune into these sideband communications. Another notable thing that can be found on HF is the High Frequency Global Communication System, or HF GCS. Hydro 15, Hydro 15, this is Andrews, Andrews, I have you Lima, Charlie. Yes. This is the HF communication system of the United States Air Force. Most of the transmissions on these frequencies are going to be emergency action messages, or EAMs, which is a topic for another day. However, there are some communications from aircraft to ground stations and phone patches made on these frequencies. Hydro 15, Hydro 15, this is Andrews. Andrews, stand by for phone patch, over. Hydro copy. I'm not sure how helpful monitoring the HFGCS would be in most situations, but worth noting and could give an indication of an increase in military activity. Other countries also have their own HF communication systems and may be worth monitoring for spikes in activity as well. Packet radio provides a number of benefits and is another aspect of this radio that solidified it as my choice for these situations as it has packet radio 
capability with its built-in TNC. More importantly, it incorporates a KISS TNC that has the ability to be connected to from a phone or PC via cable or Bluetooth. This is in contrast to the Yezu radios with built-in TNCs that are locked down and only available to the radio itself. One of the notable benefits of packet radio is its ability to transmit a substantial amount of information in a short amount of time. Compared to voice communication, using packet radio for transmissions conserves battery power as it requires significantly less time to convey the same amount of information. This efficiency can prove crucial in emergency scenarios where power conservation is essential. Another advantage of packet radio's short burst transmissions is that they are more difficult to locate through radio direction finding techniques. The intermittent nature of these short bursts makes it challenging for individuals attempting to track down the source of the transmission using traditional methods such as using a directional antenna like a Yagi to determine the strongest signal direction. While it will help for those more traditional methods, these newer, more advanced radio direction finding systems like the Kraken SDR will have a better chance of pinpointing your location. And we'll be testing this in a future video. For a system like the Kraken, limiting your transmissions to only what is absolutely necessary is key. A countermeasure of deploying something like a digipeter at a location with some elevation can also help mask your location. This will also extend your communication range and conserve battery power by lowering your power to only what is needed to reach the digipeter. This will rely on a bit of luck though because if whoever is trying to track you is close enough to pick up your signal going to the digipeter, you'll be able to be tracked. Digipeters bring up another benefit of the Kenwood THD75. They're currently advertising this radio as having a built-in digipeter, and this feature sets it apart from its predecessor, the THD-74, and opens up a range of new opportunities. Digipeters can act as relay stations that receive and retransmit digital packets, extending the reach of your coverage of signals. With the THD-75's built-in digipeter, it is now possible to establish your own digipeating infrastructure without the need of additional external equipment. The Yezu VX6 does not have a built-in TNC like the Kenwood, and I'm actually going to consider this a good thing as, the, as Yezu locks down the TNC on all of their radios, and having this included would increase the cost of the radio itself. If you need to add this packet radio capability, you can purchase a Movalinked TNC4 to connect to the radio to add this capability. I did a review on the TNC4, which I'll include a link to, to watch if you're interested. If you're looking for a more budget-friendly TNC option and have soldering ability, I've also done a whole series on building your own Nucleo TNC, and I'll include a link to that as well. While both the Kenwood and Yezu do not have the capability to transmit on FRS, GMRS, MURS out the box, they do have the ability to be Mars modded, which would then allow this capability. These radios, of course, are not type accepted by the FCC for these frequencies, but they can be used in an emergency legally. And with the prevalence of FRS and GMRS radios, this is a valuable capability to have. And last on the list, another noteworthy new feature on the THD75 is the USB-C port for both data and charging. I generally have multiple of these power banks in my kit and the ability to extend the battery life of a radio with USB charging while in a remote location is always a major plus in my book. One downside to the THD74 is the battery life and I hope it's improved on the new D75 but if not this USB-C charge capability will be a much needed new feature. 
And that wraps up the features that make me consider the upcoming Kenwood THD75 to be the ultimate shit hits the fan radio, assuming that it performs as well as the Kenwood THD74. Having this multitude of capabilities for various scenarios in a single radio that eliminates the need to carry extra radios and equipment is why I'm putting this to the top of the list. This is of course my opinion and what I think would be beneficial for a wide number of situations, but please leave your thoughts on these radios and their features, or your thoughts on what radio you consider to be the best. That'll do it for this video, and I hope you found it informative and beneficial. If so, if you haven't already done so, do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe button below. Thank you all and have a good one.